The research we've seen from Dr. Tom, Almiron and Anthony Bly in the previous video strongly supports the idea that no-till and cover crops actually increase infiltration of water into the soil. But is that research reflected across South Dakota? Before we find out, Dr. Dwayne Beck poses an interesting rhetorical question and producer Doug Zeke lays out a challenge. I always used to ask farmers when that came up, if you get caught in the back 40 in a rainstorm, do you drive home across the pasture or the plowed field? And as soon as you ask that question, And, and you go, so well, no-till is like a pasture. If you're doing no-till right, it's like a pasture. So why are you worried about excess water? We need to challenge ourselves and quit saying it won't work here. And we need to start saying to ourselves, how do I make this work here? Now that is some food for thought. Yes, and it serves as context for three simple stories from Vermilion, Selby, in Box Elder, South Dakota. In some of our farms, we used to have waterways, and our waterways are gone now because our soil structure is holding there. And so now where we used to have a 10 foot wide waterway, we now farm through it, and there's a little, you feel a little bump with the planter when you go through it, but that's it. And you can come back in the fall, and there might be a little bit of dirt had moved where that waterway was, where it used to be a four foot crater, is now just a six inch divot. So we started shifting into this no-till, not because we were great conservationists. We started shifting into it because there was an economic advantage to doing that. We could make more money. And then when we were doing that, we started learning that, okay, here's another benefit that I never gave any thought to. Look, you know, look at how well the water's soaking in the soil here. It's, it's, not, that, it's not that we're we're just winning because we're not tilling and losing the moisture. We're winning because that water's soaking in for some reason. Why is it soaking in? And uh, went up to Burley County and again, and uh, uh, they were talking about this aggregate stability you'd see in your soil where it would look like cottage cheese once you were doing things right. And I went home and I thought, well, I, I wonder how this is working, uh, what's going on out in my field. I'd never really dug in a field with a shovel. And I went out, dug down in a field, just picked a field at random, and, and lo and behold, there, there was the cottage cheese structure there. And, and there were night crawlers or earthworms anyway crawling around in the soil and I didn't expect that at all. What I was out there doing was trying to conserve moisture and uh, I didn't realize that I was affecting the soil in a positive way, the actual structure of the soil. This water infiltration into this ground is so incredible that you would be amazed after an inch of rain that I can be out here doing some, some stuff within you know 24 to 48 hours. Is that very different to what your neighbors might sometimes Absolutely. be doing? Absolutely. Uh, the like I say with the high organic matter and the condition of this ground right now, that the neighbors won't. You know, they've got some summer fallow that after a half inch of rain's got standing water, and I haven't got a spot anywhere out here that even holds water. In the last five videos, we've heard from farmers and researchers about the relationship between tillage and infiltration. And it looks like the message seems to be consistent across the state. No-till and cover crops, do these help or hinder water infiltration and improve soil water management? Merit or myth? You decide. <laughs>